Shalom, and welcome to Via Hafta Yisrael, a Hebrew phrase which means you shall love Israel. We hope you'll stay with us for the next 30 minutes as our teacher, Dr. Baruch, shares his expository teaching from the Bible. Dr. Baruch is the senior lecturer at the Zera Avraham Institute based in Israel. Although all courses are taught in Hebrew at the Institute, Dr. Baruch is pleased to share this weekly address in English. To find out more about our work in Israel, please visit us on the web at loveisrael.org. That's one word, loveisrael.org. Now, here's Baruch with today's lesson. Is sin affecting your life adversely? Meaning this, because of sin in your life, you're not able to function and do the things and have the lifestyle that God would have you to enjoy. No, our God, He wants to bring healing into our life in every sense of that world, both spiritual and physical healing in order that we can fulfill His will. Well, take out your Bible and look with me to the book of Matthew and chapter 9. The book of Matthew and chapter 9. In this chapter, we're going to see miracles miracles with a message we read in verse 1 remember that Yeshua he has been on the other side of the Sea of Galilee in a place of great rebelliousness a place of perversion a place of of disobedience to the commandments of God and a place that was full of demonic possession well he leaves that location and we find here, look with me to chapter 9 and verse 1. He, he embarked into the boat and he passed through and came into his own city. What city is that? Well, this is Kafar Nahum, Capernaum. So he's back there with, with his disciples. And we read in verse 2, and behold, that important word, something significant. Is about to happen and behold they brought to him a a paralytic that is someone who is paralyzed and this one was on a a pallet now in Hebrew the word is anuka. it's kind of like a stretcher for for moving people someone gets God forbid uh, hurt he's sick can't walk put him on a stretcher to carry this is one who is paralyzed he's unable to walk now in the scripture this concept of walking has to do with a lifestyle so when we look at it in a spiritual sense now this is physical this is a historical event but it can have a spiritual message as well it's not either or but it's both so here's this man, he is paralyzed, he is moved on this, this portable pallet from one place to another. And he's lying on this pallet, and it says, look now to, to verse 2, the second part, and behold, Yeshua. It says, he seen, it says, and Yeshua seen their faith. The faith of the ones who brought him, but the faith of this man who obviously commanded beseech his friends to bring him to Yeshua so Yeshua verse 2 seeing their faith said to the the paralytic he says be encouraged to this paralyzed man be encouraged child now it's not the word son it's not the word daughter, it has no gender, it is a neuter term, meaning child. And this term child speaks of a family relationship. Some scholars point out that it speaks about a term of endearment, recognizing a family relationship with this one. So he says, once more, child, your sins are forgiven of you I have released you from your sins now let me ask you a question do you think that's why this one came obviously he came in order to find healing 
This one wanted to walk and he heard about all the miracles that Yeshua had been do doing. Miracles healing those who were sick, who were rid, rid with disease, those who were demonic possessed. And he came there, he had faith. And those who brought him, that Yeshua could give him the ability to walk once more. But here's what we need to realize. If we're going to walk in a way that's pleasing to our Heavenly Father, if we're going to walk that, that reveals, that has a testimony of our faith in Yeshua, well, there has to be sin removed from our life. We can't walk in sin. That's not a testimony that is pleasing or accurate concerning our faith in Yeshua. So it says here that he says to him, your sins are forgiven you. Verse 3. Now he makes this proclamation of forgiveness. Now remember, we talked about a few weeks ago that Messiah, there is two primary roles of Messiah. And we call these roles Messiah ben Yosef, this suffering servant who came to deal with sin, and Messiah ben David, this one who's going to be the, the king and establish his kingdom in this world. So forgiving sin has to do with the work, why he came to die upon that cross so that we could be forgiven of sins. He says this, and behold, verse 3, a certain ones of the, the scribes, they were saying in themselves, this one blasphemes. Why? Well, remember, miracles have to do with giving us illumination, teaching us truth. And Yeshua, He's doing miracles to reveal who He is, that He's the Son of God. Still emphasizing this supreme, this power, this authority that He has. So they say, who is this one? He's forgiving sins. He is blaspheming because only God can do that verse verse 4 and Yeshua seen their thoughts now some Bibles and I'm reading from the Greek New Testament but there's two primary texts there is the Nestle Allen which is what most Bibles are translated from and there's also the Texas Receptus this is an older version of the Greek New Testament and it's the one that the King James Bible was, was translated from. And we find that if your Bible is from that newer version, meaning utilizing other manuscripts and, in actuality, leaving many sentences out of the Bible and changing it to make more sense, see, your Bible probably says, and and knowing their thoughts see that makes sense to our mind he knew their thoughts but that's not what the scripture says the best text has and seen their thoughts you say well how can he see that doesn't make sense to me well he sees everything nothing nothing escapes his sight so when we look at the scripture it says and yeshua seeing their thoughts said in order of what now that means why, but, but in order of why, what is the purpose, he says, that you have evil thoughts in your heart? What's an evil thought? Saying that Yeshua, the Messiah, would blaspheme God. That is an evil thought. Yeshua, he knows everything because everything he perceives. So he says, for what reason? Do you have evil thoughts in your heart? For what is easier to say? Now he's going to give a demonstration. He says, what's easier? Meaning this. Anyone can say a sentence. Anyone can say your sins are forgiven. What's the proof of that? Well, we don't know. But he says, what's easier to say your sins are forgiven or to say rise up and walk 
Now, they knew, those who were around, those scribes, all the people there, they knew this paralyzed man. They knew for years and years and years he couldn't walk. He, he wasn't faking anything. They knew. His legs were probably uh, uh, shriveled up. I mean, we've all seen people that cannot walk, and, and their legs reflect that. And in a moment, in a moment, what does he say? He says like this, rise up and walk in order that, that you should know that what? That the Son of Man, a term, a messianic phrase, the Son of Man has authority. We've seen for several weeks how important authority is, precisely his authority. And let me ask you a question. Does your life reflect his authority? If it does, there will be change. There will be significant change in your lifestyle. This is what the scripture is showing. This man who could not walk, he had an inadequate lifestyle, walking in Hebrew, halacha, halacha, those two words, Jewish law and walking. They're very similar. Halicha is walking. Halacha is Jewish law. Speaking about a lifestyle, how one behaves, and it's called a walk. And what the scripture's revealing to us is this. The Son of Man has authority over our life, and when our life reflects that, we are going to walk differently. So he says, so that you might know that the Son of Man has authority upon the earth to forgive the sin. Therefore, I say to this, this paralytic, this paralyzed man, walk. And he rose up and took, and, and he says, rise up, take your, your, your pallet and go away into your house. And he rose up, he went away into his house. So a miracle is done. Why? To manifest Yeshua's authority. And when we encounter His Word, when we are recipients of His forgiveness, the forgiveness of our sins, our life is going to change drastically and we're going to get to where we should be. This man was restored. Imagine what happened when he opened up that door and walked in. Imagine what if he had a wife and a family. Imagine what they would think if he didn't. Imagine perhaps what his, his parents thought. Today, one who was lame now walks. Now, if you are a student of prophecy, you know something. You know that this is one of the prophetic signs of Messiah, that the days of Messiah are at hand. When the lame walk, it heralds Messiah among us. And this is what Yeshua was teaching, that He, the Son of Man, the Anointed One, the Christ, was among them. And He came to bring change into their life. Verse, verse 8. But, now, in, in contrast to all of this, it says, contrast to... The, the scribes, it says, and the crowd on scene, they marveled. And what did they do? Well, they weren't saying he's a blasphemer. He has no right to say this. What did the crowd, the common people do? Well, they looked at the situation and they glorified God. Why? Now, it's this next part of this verse that's so important. They glorified God. Why? Because this one has such authority to give men. Now, what authority are we talking about? The authority to walk in a proper way. The authority to change our life so that we are not expressing the bondage, the presence, the power of sin in our life, but we are expressing the forgiveness of sins. So let me ask you a question. 
Is that what your life is doing? Do you have a lifestyle that, that shouts out, that testifies, I am forgiven, my sins have been dealt with, and I have a lifestyle that leads me to where I should be, doing the things I should be doing. Verse 9, And Yeshua, passing from there, says that he saw a man sitting at the tax house. Now, this man was called Matthew. Now, notice, we see this, this tax collector, Matthew, and we're going to find that Matthew is a Levite. This one should be in full-time service to God, but he's not. He is serving who? The Roman Empire. He is helping the oppressors of God's people. But what's going to happen? Well, in the same way, and this is drastic, in the same way, would you not agree that it was pretty drastic for someone who had been paralyzed now to walk? Well, now, someone who is emotionally paralyzed to the degree that he would abandon his people, not serve as a Levite, not be one who's blessing and teaching the Israelites the things of God, but what is he doing? He's in full-time service to the Romans. But when Yeshua passed by and saw this man sitting at the tax house, this one called Matthew, Yeshua says to him, follow me. He gave simply an invitation to leave your former life, what you're experiencing today, and make it just that, your former life. He invited Matthew. He says, follow me. And he got up and he followed him. Now, that invitation was just not for Matthew, but it's for all people. But here's an important truth. Yeshua, perhaps the only time that he was going to pass by this place was that day. Perhaps the only time that he would invite Matthew, Matthew, leave this. Follow me, and the implication is experience a new life, a different life, a life that's in service to me, and when we do, everything, everything, everything will change. Matthew did something. He got up and he followed Yeshua. May I invite you today to leave a life of sin, leave a life of See, why would Matthew stop being a Levite and become a tax collector? He was obviously discouraged. I mean, why else would someone leave God's call and embrace the enemies of God's people? He was angry. He was hurt. Something had happened. And now Yeshua was inviting him back. Come home. Come to where God wants you to be and embrace what God would have you to do. Matthew, wise. Matthew responded in that moment. Verse, verse 10. And it came about that he was reclining. And here again, this is a word for dining. Having a meal that usually has a biblical relationship, perhaps a holiday, perhaps some commandment some special meeting for the purpose of fellowship. So he was dining at home at his, his own house, and it says, and behold, many. See, Matthew left, and apparently many followed as well. They didn't have to wait for some specific invitation. They heard Matthew change. Matthew. And then therefore, these tax collectors, many tax collectors, and many sinners, they came and they dined with Yeshua and his disciples. Now, shouldn't we rejoice? These individuals, they're leaving Rome. They're coming home. They're embracing what God would have them to embrace. But what takes place? Well, it says, when this has happened, the Pharisees, seen said to his disciples on account of why with the tax collectors 
and the sinners does your teacher eat. Now, they didn't understand what's going on. See, you can read the Word of God, but until you're His disciple, until you invite Him into your life, until you embrace Him as your Savior, you're not going to be able to digest, you're not going to be able to comprehend and perceive the truth of the Scripture. That's why there's many men, women that teach the Bible, but because they really don't know Yeshua and the life that He wants them to live. No, they've embraced Him for their own purposes. And because of that, they're still in darkness just like these. They're saying, why? Why does your teacher, he eats with such individuals? Verse 12. But, very important word, it's a conjunction of disunity. See, they're thinking one thing, and Yeshua's come to express something different. But Yeshua, having heard, he said to them, the, the strong, now your Bible may say the healthy or the healthy or the, the ones who are strong, they don't have need for a physician, for a doctor, but the ones having, here again, it's that same word we talked about several weeks ago. It's a word that doesn't mean sick, but it's a word, kakos, which is evil. Those having evil, meaning evil in their life, penetrating evil penetrating their life, affecting their life. And it's that evil that has touched them that puts them away from what God would have them be doing, like Matthew. Instead of serving as a Levite, what is he doing? He's a tax collector. But Yeshua came for restoration, to restore us back to the life that God would have us to live. So notice he says, it's not the strong that have need of a physician, but those having evil, evil influence, evil dominating their life. He says, but you go, speaking to these uh, Pharisees. Now, these Pharisees were scholars. They spent all their time studying. And it's so significant what he says to them. He says, you go and learn what it is. And he quotes a scripture. Quotes from the book of Hosea, that is the prophecy of Hosea, chapter 6 and verse 6, where it says, Mercy I desire and not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to what? For repentance. Now, it's so significant. He says, I have not come to call the righteous. But what does the scripture say? No one is righteous, not one. Now there's one exception, and that is the righteous one, Messiah Yeshua. This one who knew no sin, but everyone else. He says, I am here because you have a need. Let me ask you a question. Do you perceive your need of forgiveness? Your need for a radical change in your life? No, when we look at our life apart from the truth of God, apart from the ministry of the Holy Spirit, apart from repentance, do we see a need for change? Do we see that evil is dominating? If you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, you're going to be filled with those things that are displeasing to God. Now, society may not see them as evil, but God does. Society may not see them as wrong, but God says these are wrong. If you have not experienced the truth, then you are in need of repentance. What's repentance? Well, there's a couple different definitions. They're not either or. They're all bringing about an accurate understanding of that term repentance. Repentance, this word that's used here, metanoia. It means after knowing something or with knowledge. And what does that imply? It implies a change, a turn to God. It's only knowledge, biblical truth, that gives us the knowledge on how to turn to God and express and experience a new life. 
the life that God wants you to live, the life that Messiah's death enables and empowers you to live. But these uh, religious ones, they didn't understand that. They weren't perceiving that. They were not aware of the change that they needed to make. Why? Because they had done something. And we're going to see this when we get into, for example, Matthew 15. There's other places, but it's so uh, uh, well documented in Matthew 15, and that is this. These Pharisees, they had embraced something, and it wasn't the law of God. It wasn't the commandments. See, Yeshua, this is the problem with many so-called Bible teachers. They think the Pharisees were those who were hanging on to the law. No, no, and no. They were not individuals that were holding on to the law. They had let go of the law of God, the commandments of God, and they had replaced it with what's called Meskort Haskanim, the traditions of the elders. They were walking, they were learning, they were studying, they were embracing this tradition. The traditions of the elders, that is man's tradition. And what Yeshua teaches us is this. We'll see it in a few weeks. When we embrace the teachings of man, what does that cause us to do? He's very clear. When we follow the teachings of man, we forsake the commandments of God. And when we're not aware of the commandments of God, we're not going to be living a lifestyle that we ought to. And that's why he speaks about at the end of this passage, this need, this need for repentance. Well, why don't you and I humbly go before God? We all understand our need of forgiveness because there's sin in our life to some degree. And ask God for forgiveness. And that forgiveness is available because he's done the work of redemption. He's paid the price when he died upon that cross, when he shed his blood, that we can experience forgiveness. And here's the good news. We can experience eternal forgiveness through the blood of Messiah. And that eternal forgiveness gives us eternal redemption. That God promises never to leave us nor forsake us, never let go of us. And we will experience eternity in his kingdom. All that begins by simply repenting, turning away from sin and turning to him. When we do that, well, that's when you embrace this new life, a life that you'll never regret, a life that will give you that inner joy, that peace, that contentment, which you've been looking for all of your life. Well, we hope you will benefit from today's message and share it with others. Please plan to join us each week at this time and on this channel for our broadcast of loveisrael.org. Again, to find out more about us, please visit our website, loveisrael.org. There you will find articles and numerous other lectures by Baruch. These teachings are in video form. You may download them or watch them in streaming video. Until next week, may the Lord bless you in our Messiah Yeshua, that is, Jesus, as you walk with Him. Shalom from Israel.